and then we put our tent up and normally before before it goes dark we collect firewood and we were collecting firewood and the gum trees right along the riverside um, dropped down their, their branches and they're quite thick and um, when they go when it when it floods you get a lot of driftwood which is really light that burns quite well yeah and we were going along the river bank not far from the junction proper just slightly up from the junction and lo and behold across the other side of the ro- uh, of the river was um, what I thought was just a hairy man a, 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 a gentleman that was you know, basically as hairy as you, you could possibly imagine. If you could imagine the, the person with the hairiest back, but having front and even facial hair, which was really unusual. Normally you would see someone with a beard, even when they've got a thick bushy beard, you can distinct, you, you can see their cheekbones, mm. their cheeks. Well, the hair on this person, uh, or, or the hairy man, went right the way up to his eye sockets. And you couldn't actually, he was that hairy, you couldn't really tell whether he had dark skin or light skin. That's how hairy this person was. Um, The only distinct feature that you could see was that the actual hair on his head, although it was long and matted, was completely different to the hair on his body. The hair on his body would have been five to six centimetres long. And it was very, very thick, but dead straight, whereas the hair on his head and into his beard, was beard and, and the hairy part of his face was very matted. Anyway, it certainly um, it caught my attention and I was a bit freaked out because the person didn't have any clothes on at all um, and was standing there. But also where the current goes in, where he was standing, the current itself um, moves the river stones so it's a very steep bank and the steep bank dropped into the water. The water was about four foot deep where he was had his foot in and the rocks were probably three to four foot on a very, very steep angle and he has one foot dangling in the water and one foot up so he had, he was sort of reached over um, having a drink and anyway, when we, uh, we saw them, we saw this person um, or this, you know, this hairy man, we went toward where he was. The river itself is only about 14 metres wide there. Uh, there is a strong current that goes through, but the water's only four to five foot deep in the deepest point, and you can sort of rock hop and get across. Well, anyway, we, we decided to rock hop and get across and, and see, um, you know, see this person or, or, or this hairy man close up. Um, and the first thing that we noticed, besides him being very hairy and a bit different, was that when he stood up, he was very tall. He was probably, I would say, six foot six, six foot seven. Um, and we were, like I said, we were only young, young gentlemen. And uh, you know, because of the hair everywhere, um, the only place that I noticed where there wasn't hair was on the soles of his feet when he took off. Anyway, he turned, he saw us, turned, stood up, and took off through the bush. Now, the bush itself was, um, it was thick forest, but towards the edge, there was lots of that bush, the prickly native Australian bush that you cut yourself on when you go through. Yep. And a normal person, including us, we would push past it, and we got scratches and cuts on our face, on our arms, he didn't even he didn't even stop. He just ran straight through this bush. Now the incline on the territory where I was talking about is the gradient. The closer when you look on a topographic map, the closer the lines are together, the steeper the gradient. Well, if you look on any topographic map on this valley, it looks like one thick line for the last part. It's very very steep. Um, the last 1,600 metres into the Kaumung, um takes you about about an hour and ten minutes to get down because you have to tack down, it's so steep mm. uh, especially with a backpack on and this um, hairy person um, or hairy man took off up through this bush like I said, did not um, uh, did not stop we got across to the river and he probably had maybe a 50 metre head start on us by the time we'd sort of gone through the current and got up when we got to the side where he was and clambered up the bank there was a really 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 strong smell of like ammonia or a urine a bit the, the, the most or the closest i've ever smelled was a fox when it's in season the 
very, very strong pungent smell. Or maybe if you go past in the zoo, the bat cage, um, when you go past um, bats that have been nesting, and you can smell that real strong urine smell. Yep. And it got as we as we could hear him running in the distance, and we followed him up the ridge. I'd say at least eight, nine hundred metres. And I was buggered, and so was my my mates. It was also at the time of the day. It was not quite four o'clock, uh, but it was. I would say to be about at this stage when we got across. Um, it would have been maybe a you know a quarter past three. Um, half past three and as you got up on that side because the sun sets to the west you're on the inside of the valley so it it, it, so it gets quite eerie so we got about eight nine hundred meters up on the ridge and we could hear him still in the distance the urine smell was getting very very strong and, I, and I, all i could assume was that was his scent and um anyway we, we got there and we realised we're getting further and further away from the river where our mm. camp is and uh, we've come to a small clearing and you know, I can still hear him running but it, it sort of dawned on me if we keep going it might be dark before we get back. We didn't have torches so we headed back down. On the way down those bushes that were cutting us there was his hair like as if a horse had gone through but his hair was stuck on the bushes. Big chunks of hair and I wish I'd been smarter and grabbed some of the hair, but we we honestly thought it was some feral guy that had um, that wasn't wearing clothes and and it had become all very very hairy. Mm. Um, when we got back down to uh, where where he had been standing on the stones and the sand, there was that really coarse river sand, yeah. and there were definite footprints on where this person had been. Uh, he wasn't wearing shoes. His feet were probably maybe a size 11. They weren't, you know, like you see on TV, Bigfoot or anything else like that. This person just had reasonable sized feet. Um, but no no, no, um, no uh, shoes on at all. And you could see his toes. There were five toes. There was a, a definite heel. You could see where his print wasn't complete, where he had an arch like, a, like an instep. And... Um, like I said, he could move very, very quickly, straight through the bushes and uphill very quickly, which is not easy to do because we were buggered only going eight or 900 metres up and he, he, we never closed on him at all. He maintained, in fact, I think he probably would have accelerated past us and moved very, very quickly. Um, I was, you know, I used to play football. I was quite fit and so too were my two mates, but we didn't have any chance of catching him catching or seeing him any any closer. Um, for the rest of the trip, uh, it, was, it was a bit hairy, you know, a bit, a bit, you were a bit uh, worried for the rest of the trip, even that first night, every every stick that broke or any, any noise outside the tent, you were, you know, you were quite alarmed, but we didn't come in contact. The only thing I can say is when we were fishing the river itself during the day, and we started fishing at about a quarter to seven in the morning, yeah. You could hear on the ridge line rocks moving and you had a feeling or a sense, um, you know, some people, you know, it might be a sixth sense they'd call it, but you, I, I felt as though we were being watched uh, and I wasn't the only one, my two mates also felt that way. Um, and it was, yeah, it was very, very extraordinary. I, we um, were coming back, when we back, went back to school, um, uh, we... I copped it, as you can imagine, from school, seeing a hairy man, and everyone's, my nickname was Yowie, and uh, everyone was, um, you know, sort of paying out on me. Uh, but they weren't paying out about four weeks later when a magazine came out, uh, a camping magazine and, and a bushwalk magazine, mm. and there was um, other people that had, had seen and described exactly what I described. Not only that, there was also um, the description of a weird smell, and um, so people then started believing me and, and um, anyway we went, we've been in most years since even um, up until not last year, the year before I went in um, and every time we go there uh, because of the wilderness I'm half expecting to see this person um, or this, this hairy man that we think now may be a Yowie. You mentioned roughly the time this took place, what, just before about 4pm in the afternoon? Was, well, we got down to the riverbank at around about 2 to about quarter past 2. Uh, we did fish for about an hour, hour and a bit. Um, and then we started collecting wood and we 
we must have been collecting wood for maybe 20 minutes before we saw this. Um, and of course, you know, when you first set up tent, you get the wood that's closest to the campsite, and then you go further afield. And it wasn't until we were um, looking for wood further up the river that we actually come across this um, wild hairy man. As a group, and you're moving up river looking for driftwood, who was the first one to actually notice this thing? In, in actually, the river? a friend of mine. And, and, and what did what did he say, or how did he motion to you that there was something there? Well, he said, "Oh, check this out." You know, um, you know, there's bloke here, and and um, and like I said, the person that the the hairy man did not see us first because we were on the other side of the river, and there's a rapid and rapid flow, and it it's quite noisy when you when you're near a river that's in rapids and whatnot. It's quite noisy, and you have to be either um, upwind or on that same side to even hear tripping over a rock or something because the, the flow of the water is quite strong. Yeah, no, I understand. Yeah. Um, and this thing was, what sort of distance was it away from, from you? I mean, were you bunched up as a group or spread yeah. out a little bit? or We, we walked up to directly opposite and it would have been 14 metres maximum to where he was when he saw us and stood up and stood up. Like I said, because he was had one foot up on the bank where the rocks were, where the current had dropped, and one foot in the water, he was doing the splits, but if you can imagine, one leg was higher than the other. Yes. He was leaning over, drinking out of his hand. And so he was sort of leaning to, would have been his right or to... He was leaning, so he was, his left leg was in the water, his right leg was on the bank, yes. and he had, when he was drinking, as he stooped down, he was drinking from his right hand, so he had his left shoulder and that part of his back towards us as we came up the river. Okay, and he's, uh, the, t just explain the motion as he was drinking, was, was he cupping one hand or just splashing water or? Cup, cupping one hand and drinking as if, as if. If, as if we had, he had bigger hands, definitely bigger hands than me, but once again, I wouldn't say they were super huge. I've seen blokes with hands as big as uh, this hairy man, but he was just cupping and drinking the water, and as he did, he stooped down so he wasn't spilling as much, and just constantly was, was drinking and drinking the whole time until we got level and he stood up. And he, there was no hesitation. He must have been very well built, although he, we didn't see his skin. To stand up from that angle, you, you have to be fairly well conditioned because certainly I had to clamber up um, where he was standing. Oh, you mean in terms of having his legs fairly widely spread? or yeah, fairly widely spread and stood up immediately. As soon as he saw us, there was no strain, no effort. Where we struggled up the side when we crossed the river, he just stood up very, very strong and straight upright. Um, and yeah, it was he was a big bloke. He was about six foot six, six foot seven. Mm. Okay, so what happened uh, from what you were saying? I'm presuming that you moved up river yep. until you were virtually parallel with him. And that was when he saw us. When we got parallel, and he stood up, um, he looked directly at us. He made no sound. Um, he didn't yell out or talk or anything else like that. He just stood straight up, and he turned and ran straight through this. It, it's like a. It's it's most bush has this prickly bush through it and it was more like scrub that he was running straight through and you get scratched arms and scratched face yeah i know that I, I know i know the stuff it's pretty mean yeah but um okay the the uh you mentioned you mentioned it was it's hair coverage but i mean um what color was the hair yeah it was a dark brown a very very dark brown it wasn't black but a very very dark brown same color all over the same color all over until you got to his face, which, have you ever seen a, a black dog when it's in the sun for too long, it gets that reddy tinge to it? Yeah. That's what his beard and his hair look like. Now, the beard and his hair was matted, um, and his hair was very, 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 very matted, and you could tell the different types of hair. You could see the ones on his shoulder and actually on his face, on his cheeks, were Five, about five to six centimetres long. I'm, I'm sort of gauging with my fingers now. About five to six centimetres long. But it was thick cover. I mean, I've been to the beach and I've seen blokes with really hairy backs. Well, if you can imagine the worst case scenario, but all over. Um, and the thing that really got me, and I was, I was, um, I was telling uh, your friend that 
normally, even a bloke with a thick beard, you can see his cheeks. Mm. You couldn't see this gentleman's cheeks. It was just... Uh, Could you see any... So you couldn't see... There was no patches on the body that were free of hair, effectively. It's on the soles of his feet, because when he turned and ran... Mm. You could see skin, and it was just discoloured, as though it had been in the mud or, or whatever, but it was just pure skin. Um, uh, and it gave you no indication of what type of colour his skin was. His, um, he just had deep eye sockets, and his hair seemed to go all the way to his... Well, I couldn't even really see his eyelashes, so his hair went all the way to his eyes. And that's really unusual. I've never seen a face like that before. Um, didn't look like a monkey or an ape or anything. It was just, as I described it, a hairy man. And uh, okay, the the um, did you notice? Uh, just getting back to the hair, because I'm just trying to cl sort of clarify that in my mind. Yep. You mentioned um, there were places where it was different. You said on the shoulders, on the face, and around uh, around his chest, all his chest, and all his legs. I look at my legs now, and I can see that my hair is, you know, it's it's you know a bloke, so it's thicker and it's but it has a curl to it. This hair was straight, and it was thick covered. But it was really, really thick covered. Um, okay, so the um, but you mentioned the the matted hair was on the face and also on the beard part, mm, around the bottom of the jaw, around the bottom of the jaw, and his hair was long. He had long hair, and it was completely different because it was matted. It looked disgusting. It looked like you know some of these. Um, uh, like dreadlock type thing. Oh yeah, where it gets cl cl clagged and sort of clotted sort of thing. Exactly right. That's what his hair and his beard was like. That. So that was around. The that was the hair on the top of the head and round under around. the jaw as well. All around. You're talking about all around the head, effectively. Yeah, but that's right. Could I ask how much you weigh? Yep, I weigh uh, at the moment or at the time or. Oh, now. Yeah, at the moment I weigh. Uh, 110, 112 kilos. How much would you say this thing weighed compared to you? Oh, it was, it was very... It, this person was well built, and I reckon he would have had 10, 15 kilos on me, but not fat. This person was solid, and his shoulders were big. Um, he could have been a footballer, you know. It was very, very... He had really wide shoulders. Was it a muscly sort of creature? Yeah, very, very muscly. And like I said, to do... To sort of have the splits where your leg is in the water and your foot, your other foot is up on a on an eroded bank and to stand up straight away, that takes a lot of effort. I couldn't even do that now. Um, he did. Okay, um, what about the... Did, did it have a, short, a, uh, a long neck or a short neck? A uh, short neck. I mean, when the thing stood up, did it look... Did you look like you were looking at something the same proportions as a person in terms of its arm's length and... Yeah, it was, it was in the body of this hairy man was in proportion, it was very solid, but it was, it, he was well defined, he, you know, he was fit. When the creature looked at you, can you describe the face, I mean, you know a human face, were you looking at a human face or you just couldn't tell because of the hair or like... It, 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 if you could imagine, um, how could I describe it, if you can imagine a very, very tall person, his face was taller than mine because obviously his, your head sort of grows in proportion. Mm. He had a quite a long forehead. When and you say long, do you mean like sort of just deep or, you know what I mean, like yeah, tall forehead? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it had a, well, um, well, I'm looking at my forehead. His forehead was probably twice the height of my forehead. Okay, did he have a, a round head or a kind of a pointy head or? A, a bit of a, well, because of the hair, it was thick hair, it looked as though it was more pointy than mine. I've got a rounded head. Yeah. His looks more p pointy than mine. It was just... Yeah. What about, did it have a... I mean, a human nose is essentially kind of pointy. Did it have that sort of a nose? Yep. Yep. Okay, it was pointy. Yep. And uh, the eyes, you could see the eyes as it looked at you? Yeah, I could see the eyes. The eyes were, were a, a dark colour. I couldn't tell you what colour, but it, well, I've got, I've got bluey-grey eyes, and it certainly wasn't that. It was more brown. Mm. But they were... His eye sockets were, and I've seen people like it, but uh, his eye sockets were set well back, um, and yeah, it just it was unusual, mm. and uh, um, yeah, his did, eyes seemed to be recessed more back than what, were, what yours or mine would be. Did you uh, did you see a um, uh, did you see a mouth at all? Uh, yep. yep. What, when it looked at you, or when it was drinking, or when it, when it was well, when it was drinking, and when it when it looked at me. And what, it were thin or thick or, or difficult to sort of describe? It just looked like a mouth or...? It just, it, it just was thick-set lips, 
the hair wasn't growing on the lips. The hair came up to the lips. Was it dark coloured around the mouth, or I mean, the, were the lips dark coloured or light coloured like skin? No, no, it was a darker coloured. Okay. When, when you saw the thing side on drinking, you know how apes have a muzzle. You know they have a like, and it's not like a human face. They have a, a kind of a protruding muzzle. Did this creature have a face like that no. inside on? No, or had it more human sort of profile. Yep. So it saw you and then basically... Stood up. Yeah. It stood up and like I said, it was the, w the way it was to us was it had one leg in the river, one leg on the bank, and to do what it did was... It, you have to be a bit athletic to do that anyway. I certainly couldn't have done it, but he had long legs yeah. um, because he was you know, six foot six, six foot seven. Yeah. Um, and he stood up and looked directly at us. There was no... It didn't show any expression, no fear... Uh, and it just turned and ran. So, how would you describe its expression? You said it didn't see, seem to have an emotion on it. Was it kind of blank or...? Yeah, it looks blank. It was a blank look. And it looked, its eyes looked straight at, at both myself and my two mates. Mm. How long did you have the thing in view? In view, I mean, not, not, not how long did the whole encounter take place, because it obviously... Yep. I'll, I'll probably ask that question in a second, but how long did you all up have this thing in view for? I reckon a good five minutes by the time we got up to it, and we, we, cause we, when my mate pointed it out, I said, oh, what's that? And, you know, and he said, oh, it's just a, it's a bloke, I think he's, you know, and we had a conversation, and we walked up. We probably would have had to walk 30 metres upstream to get level with him, so I'd say four to five minutes. And then when he saw us, it stood up and, you know, it, you sort of take a step back and, and you know, it was, it was quite weird. And we, he took off and ran through the bush and our first instinct was to go across the river and check this bloke out. So you weren't scared of it? I, I wasn't at first. I, I wasn't at first. It wasn't until we got eight or nine hundred metres up the hill, the ridge, thinking we're not making any ground, we're eight or nine hundred metres up the ridge, the light isn't the best at the moment. Uh, if we keep going, where are we going to end up and it's going to be dark before we got back? You had the thing in view for about five. Yep. All up, how long, I mean, if you include the chase, yep. how long did the episode from beginning to end take, do you think? Well, when he turned and ran, he went straight into the bush. So as soon as he turned up the bank and ran into the bush, we didn't see him. We could hear him, but we didn't see him. Uh, it took us a little, you know, he would have had... 50, maybe a 50 metre head start on us by the time we crossed the river um, and we didn't gain, in fact I, I think he was gaining on us um, because by the time we got to 800 or 900 metres up we were buggered. So this thing was, you could hear it what, you could hear it, just, was it yeah, thumping it was, or just crashing through the bush or? It was crashing through the bush but also on, because it's such a steep descent the ground isn't solid under you, there's rocks. Mm. And so as you run and clamp, your feet slip on the rocks mm. and you could hear rocks moving ahead and, and banging and crashing through the bush and you could hear it. And um, the other thing too was we could hear, we were, we were puffing and panting and we could hear it puffing and panting in the distance. And um, like I said, we, we got... Uh, I, I don't think I could have run a lot more than what I did because of the steep descent and we were, we were trying to catch it, uh, or catch up with it, sorry. And, um, but, uh, yeah, we, we, we weren't making any ground at all on it. Mm. Um, when we got to the clearing, we could hear it, but we certainly couldn't see it. I could see the direction it had been through where it had barged through the bush. I couldn't actually see it when we stopped. Well, you saw it run off. Did it run like a human runs, or was it, it different? Just, it just turned, and oh, I could see, I knew that it didn't have a hair on the back of its feet because as it ran, its leg lifted up, and I could see the sole of its foot. Mm. It, and it ran, and it had a big step on it, like a, you know, as if you were striding out, and it just went into the bush. And like I said, where we were worried about getting cuts and scratches. And it just went straight through. Straight through. And the only thing that I regret doing, even to this day, and the only thing I regret was not getting some hair. Yeah, which was around. Which was, yeah, which was stuck on the, you know, on that bush. It's the same thing, uh, if I can describe it, is when you go through a bush and you can see a horse trail where a horse has gone through. There's always plenty of hair. That's right. Mm. And you could see that. On Did you actually grab the hair or touch it? Yeah, I, I, we actually saw it, and I pointed it out, and I said, look, that's his hair, and... and um, but you didn't actually touch it or sort of put it in your hand? It was just long hair. It was um, quite coarse. Yeah. Um, but it was it was very, very... It's, it was a dark brown colour. And uh, it was sort of, what, a few centimetres long, or...? Yep, about five to six centimetres long. 
And it was there in clumps? Yep, in clumps. Yep. So the per mm. person that run had either come off his arms or his legs, or even even his buttocks were covered in hair. When you saw it from the back, you saw that it was totally covered all up and down the back in hair? The only place it didn't have hair was on the soles of its feet. And yeah. I didn't get to see the inside of its hand either. I'd assume that the inside of its hand obviously didn't have hair in it as well because I haven't seen anyone. Mm. When it took off, did it run or did it walk quickly? It ran. It ran. Yeah, it, stu it, it stood up and looked at us at first, turned and ran straight away. And you said it moved pretty darn quick? Yep, yeah, very. Yeah. Very Faster than a person would run or? For sure. Well, it, it, it would, well, we had no chance. We, we didn't have any chance at all. We, like, going up on that terrain, because it's so steep, to get that far in front of us... Was, right. Yeah, it was un really unusual. Yep. Yeah. The, um, and when you saw it from the back, I mean, this thing was wide, you know, I mean, it was pretty hefty across the shoulders? If, if you look at someone who's, who's done weights and they have wide shoulders and like a V shape, yep. that's how this, it was very well defined and his buttocks were big, like his, the back of his buttocks were solid. And you could it, actually see the buttocks sort of defined, you know what I mean? You could see the defined, but it was hair all over, but you could see it. As soon as we sort of crossed that grassy bit and we got to the bush, that first part of that real thick bush, yeah. that's when you could smell it. And up the hill, it got worse. As you were going up the hill, you could smell it was stronger. And and I was thinking when we stopped, when we got eight, um, eight 900 metres up, where we actually stopped where there was a partial clearing, um, it was really strong. And that's when you sort of, your mind starts racing. You think, oh, it's getting darker. Um, what is this thing? It doesn't smell real good. Are we going back to where it lives? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and your mind starts the race, even though you're, what, what could happen? 